Quail Studios guitar. Let's see here. Dean says it's a bit gloomy in Hurricane Utah this morning. Mike says bright, sunny in Nashville. Hello, Mike. How you doing? Great. Here, it's sunny, but it's a little cool. We're going to talk about While My Guitar Gently Weeps this morning. I'm just going to go ahead and even uh, teach it. Now, in the description of this video, you will find a link to the lead sheet. The lead sheet looks like this. Okay? And uh, basically what it is, it's one page. It gives you the lyrics. It gives you the chords that we're going to go over. So what we've got at the beginning, I've got an A minor chord. This is how I play it solo. That's my first chord, A minor. Uh, a minor with a G bass. That's, what I, that's the way I do it right there. Here, let me get closer. So here's my A minor with a G bass like this. I look, A minor, at you all. A minor with a G bass. See the love. This is my next chord. I'm playing a D with an F sharp bass. And I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about this chord and how it works. Hello, Matthias from Germany. Thank you for being here. Okay, a D7 is like this, right? I'm not playing that high E string. I'm playing the F sharp right there, the open D string right there. Then I'm playing second fret, first fret, and so, let's see, let me do it right. I'm not doing anything with my pinky, it's just hit, sitting there. Now, one thing you can do is you can mute that E string with your finger like that, or you can you can have it open. And if you do that, then it's a D7 with an F sharp bass, add nine, because that's, that's the nine. I really like to have that open E string really think it sounds good then we play an F chord like that which is a bar chord now you could just do an F like this but I really like that low F note now you don't have to play the whole thing you could just play the low strings right down here now you can do the F like this or you can do it like this you know, I really like, like I said, I really like that low F because the, the bass line goes, I look at you all, see the love there that's sleeping, like that. I look, of course, I've got an open A string right there. See the love there that's sleeping. Now, one of my students says he likes to use an F major 7, which is like this. See that? Because you can't do the bar. And that's okay too. One thing I like about that is that open E is still there, right? So you get this. And then you get the F, but you don't get the, the low F down there. So if you want to, if your hand is big enough, you could do that F major seven with the <laughs> F over the top if your hand is big enough. And, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure John Mayer could do that. It's a little bit tough for me to do that. It's hard. So I don't do it that way. And then we go back to A minor. While my guitar G. This is the G chord I use. I go ahead and mute that A string with this finger. Gently we. Then I go to a D chord. Now, what I do is I use the, the G like this, and then I slide this finger back and drop the D chord in like this. This is like my default D chord. I really love playing the D like this. You know, I could go do it like this, but then I'd have to move all my fingers around. So I like to do the G like this, slide that finger back, have my D like that. And then we go to an E chord, right? And that's our chord progression for the first line of the verse. I'll do that again. I look at you all, see the love that's sleeping, while my guitar gently weeps. 
then the next line is exactly the same except for the last two chords. I look at the floor and I see it needs sweeping. Still my guitar gently weeps. C chord, we go to a C chord. Weeps. And then to an E again. The theory is like A minor, A minor with a G bass. Now you know what? If you've got a bass player, you don't have to do that. Let's uh, let me put something in my. Yeah, that's better. So something like that. If you've got a bass player, then you don't have to do all that stuff with the bass line. But if you don't have a bass player, you need to uh, put the bass lines in. Uh, makes it really great. Uh, Mike says, the walk down makes the song. I have to agree with you, Mike. I love that walk down. It sounds really good. All right, so we get done with the... Uh, At the floor and I see... That D7 with an F-sharp bass that we were doing, um, what's interesting is that that's actually not in the key of A minor because of the F-sharp. When we do that G to C, that's like, it's almost like it's in the key of C. Uh, but then we do this E, and then we go to the bridge. This is an interesting song because it doesn't really have a chorus. You know, he says, while my guitar gently weeps at the end of every line in the verse. Uh, and so that's kind of like a chorus. But then we have like a, a verse and a bridge and a verse and a lead, which is actually a verse because of the chords. And then we have a bridge and another verse. And then we have a lead, which is actually the chords and the verse again. So that's really all we have is we have a verse and a bridge, those two things. So let's go to the bridge. After we get done with that E, we, we go to an A chord. All right, so the bridge goes. I don't know how. C sharp minor. This is our next chord. So we're actually like we've gone to the key of A, which is the parallel major key to you know A minor. Instead of A minor, now we're in major, and we go up to the C sharp minor, which is a three chord. Why nobody told you like that? Um, C sharp minor to F sharp minor. Nobody told you. Back to C sharp minor. These two chords, the C sharp minor is the three chord, the, uh, I think it's a three chord. Yeah, it's a three chord. Minor three. Going to the F sharp, which is the six. The E is, is the five. F sharp minor is the six. And so we go A. I don't know how. F sharp minor. Nobody told you. Next one is I have B minor 7 on the chart. But sometimes what I like to do is go from the C sharp minor to the B minor. And then, then go to the B minor 7 because it sounds really good that way. So we go. Um, Nobody told you how to unfold. I don't do this anymore, but the bass line goes. It climbs up from E, F sharp, G sharp to A like that. But what I do is I go, and then I go back to my E chord. Because I kind of want some bass, bass line in there, but it's really hard to hold the E and then stretch over to the G sharp. And so instead of trying to do that and, and messing up, I just go. Back to A, second line. I don't know how. F sharp minor. Someone controlled you. B or B minor. They bought B minor seven. So you. I look, and then we're back into a verse. Let's give you an alternate to the B minor seven. If you can't do that B minor seven bar chord, 
you could do the B minor 7 like this. Right? How to control your love. Sounds really good. And also the C sharp minor and the F sharp minor. If you can't really do those very well, one thing you can do is you can do, like you could do the bottom notes or you could do the top notes like this. Um, I have a video about um, half bars and things like that. Um, how to simplify bar chords, you can go look that up on my channel. Or just, you know, put Quail Studios and uh, then put like simplify bar chords or half bars or something like that. And you'll see how to do like a C sharp minor like this to a F sharp minor. Or you could do F sharp minor like that or you could go like that. You could play the low E string. I'm just doing a bar across and the three high strings right there, right? But then if I'm doing, if I'm playing, ah, palm muting skill. You're looking at my palm muting. Thank you very much. I can't make sounds clear like you. Well, you know, what you do is you practice. And actually I have a video on palm muting, right? About how to do that, you know? Let's talk about the, the strum too, okay? If you can give me a thumbs up on this video if you're enjoying it, if you're getting something out of it, uh, just please do that. Thank you very much. Okay, strings. These are not heavy strings. You know what I've got on here? I've got, um, I've got 11s on here, Mike. 11 gauge strings. These are Diodario strings, 11 gauge. I forget what it is. Look it up. Go to like uh, Sweetwater or Musician's Friend or something like that and look up the strings. I am also using an equalizer on my guitar and I'm boosting the mids a little bit. And that's why it sounds really good. Let me, let me take that off. See that? So when I take the, the equalizer off where I've boosted the mids, which are the, uh, like the, the 200, the 400, I got a really good boost on the 400. So, see, that's with the equalizer on. So it sounds better that way. At the end of the bridge, there's a bass line that does that, but I'm, I'm going to go back to the verse. I look at the world and I notice it's turning. What I'm doing here is down, down, up, up, down, up. That's my strum pattern. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now I'm not strumming all the strings all the time. Right? I don't do that. But I hit the low. Right? I separate the low strings from the high strings. like that. So I'm going down, down, up. See that? Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Something like that. So when I hit those low strings, I don't hit just hit the bass note. Right? I hit two or three strings. And yes, I do do a little bit of palm muting right there because it sounds so cool. Right? If you don't palm mute, it sounds like this. Let's see if I can turn that so you can see. If I'm not palm muting, it sounds like this. But if I'm palm muting, it sounds like this. I'm not palm muting the whole thing. What I'm doing is I'm palm muting the, the initial strike right there. So I'm actually just hitting the strings. When I do that, I come down. <laughs> I'm trying to get the camera angle right here. Like this. So what I do is I put my hand down right there by the bridge. I've got a video on palm muting too if you want to know more about that. I put my hand right by the bridge, this part of the hand. I call it the heel of the hand, right? Put it right by there, and you just... Right? 
Mm. And that's one of the reasons, Mike, that the strings sound heavy is because when I do the palm muting, right there, right? Then the palm muting takes out some of the highs, and so you get a really low sounding, cool sound. Palm mute, no palm mute, palm mute, no palm mute. So on those up, so it goes down with a palm mute, down, up, up, down, up, no palm mute. And then palm mute, no palm mute, palm mute on the down, one, down, up, up, down, up. And then palm muting here. Right? That sounds really cool. And you don't strum the whole thing. Right? You just do that. Even though I hold an E chord the whole time. Right? So when you do that, I'm doing the low E string and the B string and maybe the D string right there on the second fret. Right? And that's what we do. So that's basically it. Now when we do the lead, I'm going to do a loop here really quick. And then like play a little bit of a lead. Now, I don't know the lead to this, so I'm just going to improvise something. I'm going to be in A minor. It'd be nice to get my electric guitar down off the wall and do the lead, but I'm just going to do it. Just improvise something here on uh, A minor pentatonic. I made too many mistakes on that, but I just improvised something. So what I did first, I went from the first box to the second box, and then I started to work on that melody. Sounds really good that way, don't you think? I might tab that out sometime uh, for you. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing leads exactly like they are on records because if you listen to records and really, really focus in on them, then you'll notice that live recordings are different than the record. Almost always a little different. After the lead, we go back into a bridge. I don't know how you were diverted. One thing that's really tempting for me to do is when I'm going from F to A minor is to go F, G, A minor because that's a great progression in A minor, right? So it's like, I look at you all, see the love now that's sleeping while my guitar... Now sometimes don't they do, I look at you all They did that like at some point, even at the last verse, maybe they did that. I look at you all. Still my guitar, chimney weeps. And then we have a lead again. So I'm just going to stop there. I'm just kind of messing around, you know. It was it was fun. I'm like exploring where I can go. On my electric guitar, I would do a lot more bending, and that's really fun, you know, to bend because that's where you get that weeping sound. Especially if you pre-bend. 
That means if you bend the note up to where you want to go, and then you bring it back down. I love that for this song. But that's basically the whole song. Remember, you can get my my lead sheet in the description. There's a link down there. It's free. Okay, you can just download it. Uh, for those of you who actually have my book in this month, on the 15th of the month or sometime around there, I'm going to publish the book again. I do a new, uh, a new version. I'm going to put this lead sheet in so that everybody has it. <coughs> Does the grimace make the sound better, Dean? You, al- you, always, have, you always have great <laughs> comments <laughs> about about this. I love it. I love having you here because you are the life of the party. And Mike says, improvising the lead is much better. You know what? I love improvising leads. It's nice to start out a lead with uh, a lot of times with the ideas that perhaps it was on the record or something and then do your own thing. I love to do that. All right. Thank you very much for being here. I'm going to go, you guys. Gosh, we've been here for quite a while today. It's been great to have you around. See ya.